Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. Today I wanted to go over some of my recent DNFs. And by recent, I mean all of 2018. This is a video I've been intending to make for months and I haven't gotten around to it. So I'm going to encompass all of the books that I did not finish in the entirety of 2018. There's 13 books and I'll run through why I stopped reading them. Maybe if you did finish them and you think it's worth that I give it a second go around, please let me know in the comments. The first First book is Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado. And this is a book of short stories and for me it was just too experimental. It was hard sometimes to kind of get the message or point that she was intending with her stories. I remember I stopped during the SVU story that's like 40-ish pages and like almost half the book. I did not understand or get the SVU story and after it was being touted as like the best part of that entire collection I was just like mm, I don't think this is for me. I really liked the apocalypse story. I think it was either the first or second story and I just think that it's still hard for me to find collections that I really enjoy. The second book that I wanted to talk about is Still Life by Louise Penny. This is the first book in that Carmen Gamache series. Armand Gamache. I decided to give this up because of the audiobook experience. It was a very slow speaking British accent. Even on two times speed I thought that it was too slow. I think overall it was just kind of a drag for me and the things that I thought I would really enjoy about the story which was like the town, the small town kind of life and gossip and relationships between the people did not captivate me at all. It actually kind of bored me. I'm sad because I did not care about the mystery and I didn't care about the characters. Let's talk about Indecent and this is a book that I first got on NetGalley because I I kind of felt like it would be a book for me. The hype was kind of making it sound to be close to The Girls by Emma Klein which was my favorite book of 2017 I think. So I was really excited for this release and I started reading it intending to be captivated by like how it would discuss sexuality in the way that The Girls did. I didn't feel that way at all. I feel like I was not relating and I did not care about her working in an all-boys school and I could just see the book just going downhill and her making questionable choices with younger men and I was just like let me get out of here before uh, I really regret this. Sorry NetGalley publisher person but maybe it's better this way because I didn't give you a bad review. The next adult fiction book that I was excited about because everybody else was really enjoying it was The Female Persuasion. This is the first book by Meg Wallitzer that I've tried to read. I just don't think her writing style is for me. I ended up giving up this book at around 160 pages. I thought I had like some interesting discussions about life and I valued kind of like those little nuggets having to do with feminist theory and just gender in general but I didn't care about the plot and the plot really felt like it was at a standstill it wasn't going anywhere I think that's Meg Waltzer's style from the way that I've sort of heard from other people I didn't really care that much about the characters and they to me felt kind of out of reach and that's why I gave up on this book because it was long and I was not going to continue I gave up a young adult book this past year and that was the accidental bad girl I was excited about this one because it was written by the daughter of a person whose podcast I listened to and it was kind of interesting how that like came to be. I really liked what the plot sounded like. It sounded like a funny mystery. I expected to really enjoy the main character. I expected to be overcome by this like mystery but at the same time that there would still be a little bit of snark to keep me engaged. I just thought that it was all over the place. This book felt like a thriller at moments. It felt like a quirky comedy story. It felt like too many things were happening at once. I had to constantly reread sentences to kind of just know what was going on. At 120 pages I didn't like where it was going so I decided to stop reading it. So those were all the fiction books. Let's talk about some of the non-fiction books that I gave up this year. The first one that I gave up was Political Tribes. I was interested in this book because I like thinking about how we kind of make ourselves live in a bubble and those are interesting conversations to be having in this moment but I just thought that the audiobook narration and just the, the general words that were coming out of uh, the narrator's mouth were really condescending and weren't really going to heal wounds and get us to come closer together and to understand why living in political tribes is not a good thing. So that's why I stopped listening to this audiobook. I also tried to read 31 Days which is an account of the Nixon pardon by President Ford 
and it just follows those 31 days when they are going through this very turbulent moment in American political history, what they should do, what kind of precedent that would set for the country and you know ethical reasonings to do one thing or another. I thought that this sounded really interesting. I like reading about Nixon and kind of like his ideas of the world and how he ran his White House and how that all faltered. What I didn't really like about this book is that it didn't feel enthralling or compelling. It felt more rote. It was like every day was being documented those 31 days and it didn't feel like we were connecting things and we weren't also connecting to like history in general of what happened before and what happened after and I think that would have made it a much more interesting read. Another book that I gave up listening to on audiobook I think because it might not be the best thing to listen on audiobook it might just be a book that I need to read physically was The Road to Unfreedom by Timothy D. Snyder. I like the introduction I just didn't think that the audiobook version was the best way to consume this. I wasn't going to keep names straight or you know what's going on in different nations straight. I think I need to see those words on paper. I also gave up reading and listening to Meditation for Fidgety Skeptics, which is by Dan Harris. I've read Dan Harris's 10% Happier, and that was kind of a memoir and him finding meditation being helpful for him during a stressful moment and time period in his life. This book is supposed to be kind of like a how-to for people who kind of don't really know 100% the values of meditation and haven't done it as a practice. I thought it was a little bit too similar to 10% Happier and that's pretty much the reason why I dropped it. I felt like I everything that I had already heard in 10% Happier was being rehashed in this new book. I also gave up on People Who Eat Darkness. I listened to this on audiobook and it just started to lose momentum for me. I also thought that at moments it focused too much on like the gory details of this true crime story and I really am not about listening to kind of gruesome details. I wasn't sure if the book would pay off in the end if we would just keep kind of hearing about grim situations. I also gave up on Bear Coon and I thought it was a little bit hard to get into. I also have been hearing kind of like mixed reactions about what is said in the foreword and in the afterward of the book. So I didn't really feel like I was getting into it and I stopped listening maybe an hour into it. I gave up two books during Nonfiction November. One was Bonk, which I thought was really hard to listen to on audiobook because I was listening to it on CDs and it was just hard to keep like taking the CDs out and putting them into the computer and also my computer doesn't have a CD drive so I had to like have another attachment. It was a lot of work and I didn't really care that much about the book as I was listening to it. There were some funny moments and puns and stories but I don't know if like the humor and the subject matter were necessarily captivating me enough to continue listening. I lastly gave up on Dope Sick by Beth Macy. I expected this book to be a lot more about personal vignettes of people who have suffered because of the opioid crisis and instead it was more about Big Pharma and how they have kind of cornered this market and created this crisis and though that's important it's not necessarily what I want to read when I read nonfiction titles like this. I'm much more interested in people's stories more than I am about like conglomerates and like businesses and what they've done so I gave up on Dope Sick as well. That's it. Those are the 13 books that I stopped listening to or reading and for a variety of reasons. If you've read any of these and finished them, please let me know in the comments. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye bye.